G'day people, just going to do a video for you today here on an Acom 1000. If you're looking to buy an Acom amplifier, watch this uh, for some basic tips and tricks. This is a video virtually for someone who's looking to buy an amplifier. If you already own one, you're probably going to know everything I'm already about to, to talk about. Uh, first thing we'll look, look at is key in, key out with the Acom 1000. Um, they have a key in and key out with the Acom 1010. They only have key in. But don't panic too much because an Acom 1000 will work just as key in. So if you have, I think there's a, is it the Yasu 101? Has a RCA jack straight out of the radio uh, already made in the back of it. So I think it'll, it'll still work just with key in. Um, so it's not a worry. Now, a lot of people buy these uh, key in cables. I don't see a need to, I just make my own. I'll show you how uh, you should have one at home, an old VCR or a DVD player, even a, a brand new television usually come with these. So they're free. I had about four or five of them. And what you do is just get a normal pair of wire strippers, which will take that uh, plastic off and you'll be left with the braid. This is like a, a very fine coax, works perfect. And just choose which color you want, red active, you know, yellow standby, whatever. Um, I'll just show you a couple of pre-made ones I've made. I just made one here. I just made this one for the TS2000 if I take it out to our other property. Just simple, just as the work is key in only. And these are a uh, seven pin DIN connector. These are made here by JCAR in Australia. I've got them actually very well made. Um, but you just gotta have a steady hand that you don't melt the inside of the plastic there with your soldering iron if you get a bit carried away. I'll just show you the, and that's that's this normal full size one. And you can just make them for any length you want that way. And this one here is just I just made this shorter so I can just go from the back of the radio straight into the amplifier. Um, so there you go. Now uh, your amplifier here, oh, sorry to look at this coax in I use RG58 to go into mine. I used to use 213 but I moved the amplifier once, only very slightly, and all of a sudden I started getting all this interference, etc., uh, on my radio. I thought, what's going on here? What, what have I done differently? And uh, that's, I must have moved it slightly, and it didn't quite make 100% contact. So if you get an one of these amplifiers and you think it's creating interference, start looking here. Make sure that these connectors, or especially this one, is making 100% contact on the earth side. So you don't have any issues. So I just use RG58. So a little bit of power in and a whole lot of power out. Now they only come with one uh, output antenna port, but if you use multiple antennas like me, what you do is just get yourself a coax switch. This is rated at 1500 watts, and I have three antennas. You know, so I've got three. You can get the four, whatever. I think they even make a five nowadays. But I just run mine straight out of there into my low pass filter, which is rated at 1.5 kilowatt as well because I'm in close proximity to my neighbors. Uh, so prevention's better than a cure. So I don't create any trouble uh, for them. Now, uh, what else can I tell you? Uh, so also if you go to use it on six meters, the Acom 1000 does six meters, the 1010 doesn't. The 1010 is just a HF rig. HF, sorry, amplifier. So if you go into your settings on your radio into your menu, it should have a HF uh, setting and a separate one for six meters. So bear in mind, make sure you activate that if you're gonna use six meters. Power on, uh, that, that doesn't turn it on, it just gives it the power, uh, it lights up the front, but I only, leave my, I only switch it on when I use it really. Otherwise it's just switched off, I don't see the sense of leaving that on. Fuses just screw out. I've never had to undo them, so that won't be an issue. Um, earthing, I run about, this is about three or four mil of earth wire. It runs straight outside into its own earth stake into the ground, and the transceivers are on separate earth stakes. So that's more than sufficient. Some people use braid and all sorts of different ideas. Uh, or run, run them all at one, but that's what I do. Just three or four mil straight into its own earth stake. It's never really given any trouble. And you, and you want your ground not to be w wet and mushy because 
uh, it won't work. It needs to be sort of dry ground, so it's it's got a ch so your earth stake's got a chance to work properly. Um, so there you go. Uh, the power lead here it comes without an end on it. So some dealers might put a plug on it before they send it to you, but expect one not to have one. And uh, here in Australia on 240 volts, I think there might be a setting inside for. Uh, for the European countries and and one here for Australia, but they'll set that in the factory. Sorry, the tubes. I'm going to talk about the tubes. Tube life is very important. So, um, to put it simply, if you're going to purchase an amplifier, you need to look at how much power you want to run. So, would you drive down in the, drive down the freeway in your car, peak revving it as hard as a motor would? It's not going to last long, is it? Same with the tube. So if you want to run, uh, you know, 1500 watts all day and all night, I'd be looking at the ACOM 2100. Um, and if you want to run 1000 watts continuously day and night, I'd be looking at the ACOM 1500. Uh, but here in Australia we have power limits, so this is just the ACOM 1000. It should last forever with our power limits here, 400 watts. Um, I don't really use mine on digital modes. They can get quite hot on digital modes. I think I've used it a handful of times on uh, PSK and Ritty when that used to be a thing, not so much nowadays. Uh, so you do see some people put external fans on them. So that could be a thought if you use it heavily for digital modes. But on SSB, I see no need for that at all. Uh, I've used this in, uh, in pile-ups for three and four hours here in the, in the early hours of the morning in Australia because I'm about the only guy silly enough still to be awake so everyone's yelling at me um, but yeah it's never missed a beat so on sideband there would be no need for you to do that uh, it can it can punch out quite a bit of heat but like I said I don't use it in digital mode so I can't really comment too much on that for you what else can I tell you is uh, solid state versus tubes. I went with a tube amplifier because they're just simple. Simplicity lasts forever and they're bulletproof. Uh, I've got very close proximity antennas, so that's something you need to keep in mind if you're looking at a solid state, because uh, I know they're a little bit susceptible to RF getting in them and hot switching. So, um, yes, yeah, so, so far so good. I've never had any trouble with a tube amplifier. They're just simple, they work, uh, trouble free. Uh, now buyer beware, the only thing I could say to keep an eye on with an ACOM, when I got this it had a very noisy high voltage transformer which is just in there, right about there. And it was very loud when I got it and I sent it back to the dealer and they run some tests and decided it was pretty noisy so they swapped that out and sent it back and it's just dead quiet now, it's just awesome. You can have the thing running transmitting away, you know, you don't need the headphones on, it's right in front of you here, it's nice and quiet, it's just awesome. So that would be the only thing I would say, buyer beware, is just keep an eye on the uh, high voltage transformer in them. Some of them seem to be quite loud. Um, but outside of that, they're pretty much bulletproof, they're a pretty good bang for the buck, or well, certainly here in Australia. Um, and yeah, like I said, I've had this one three or four years. A lot of people say, you know, you've got to replace the tubes and all that. I've never had a trouble with it. So hopefully that helps someone if you're thinking of buying one. Just some basic tips and tricks. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to show you tuning it up. There's endless videos on YouTube of that. Uh, so you've got <laughs> plenty of resources to look at for people dropping carriers and, and showing you how they tune up. But I'll just sort of give you a video on just the basics um, to get you started if you're looking at one. 7-3, thank you for watching.